This is me, the Undead Viking, and this is clunkity clunkity. Uh, Cinna Tempora. Cinna Tempora is a cooperative uh, space themed game in which each player is taking on the role of a heroic uh, settler. Um, basically, the idea is is that your home planet is this dry, lifeless husk of a world, and so you and other brave settlers have left that world on your terraforming ship. And you are traveling out trying to find uh, your spot that you can then uh, land and, and, and you know, propagate uh, your, your species, you know, so, so your species doesn't die out and, and, and continue to live. Um, the problem is, is that you landed on a, 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 a alien world that um, isn't so much inhabited by another alien race, but... An alien race is currently using that, like that, that planet is kind of like a gaming preserve, if you will, and uh, they're not really happy about it. And so, as you are trying to, you know, carve out your little settlement, as you're trying to carve out your world and and and, and live, um, these aliens are showing up and 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 trying to oust you uh, uh, from their territory, if you will. So, uh, the game is, uh, like I said, a cooperative space theme game. It is all about the combat. It is all about being clever it is about tactics and strategy it has some fantastic miniatures which i'm going to show them to you and uh it has a really really awesome uh activation uh process where where you will be um taking actions and activating your uh your your, your characters uh and also activating the enemies at the same time and it adds a lot to um, like the, your planning and your strategy and, and a lot of the, the, the interaction between the players as you discuss what you're going to be doing in each turn. But let me show you how the game is played and then we'll come back here and I'll give you my final thoughts. All right, here we go. This is Cine Tempora, and I'm going to kind of go over the basics of the gameplay. Now, uh, there is a lot going on in this game, so uh, I might be jumping around a bit, so just kind of bear with me. But I want to actually give you a really good overview and then kind of highlight some of the very specific mechanisms. The most important mechanisms in this game um, is the activation and, of course, uh, resolving combat. Because, you know, obviously this is a very, uh, it's a cooperative experience, but you are going to be doing battle uh, with some really cool uh, alien bad guys, if you will. So, all right, so the game is, I mean, you can play this game a bunch of skirmishes and just have fun with it, whatever, uh, but the game is based around the idea of having a campaign. And, uh, you know, because you are, you know, like the last remnants of, of, of your race and you're trying to uh, survive and, and, of course, then, like, there's these aliens. And which, you know, I'm going to talk about the theme a little bit more when I get to the end here. But, I mean, it's an interesting theme and I'll talk about that in my final thoughts. But, um, so... You are going to like, you know, pick a location, um, you know, obviously like, you know, landing zone HQ is here, but as the campaign progresses, um, you're going to have a storyline that kind of evolves and you're going to take and you're going to these different spots and you're going to be experiencing missions in those locations. So you have this map. Um, so when you, when you go decide as a team, you know, what you're going to be doing or what your location is or what your objective is, um, there's uh, like all of these, these cards that you're going to have that are going to give you these missions. And on the back, on the other side of the mission, you're going to have a map and it's going to tell you exactly how to set it up. It's going to tell you the different, uh, creatures, you know, like aliens that you're fighting, where those aliens go, um, you know, what, what the objectives are. And you, it, it's it's kind of really fine print here, but basically the whole thing is, is that uh, the players need to get to this artifact that's back here, and they need to claim it. Uh, and but you'll notice that there is uh, like this bridge that is out. It, you know, on the other side here, the bridge is full. So, but since you can't get across the bridge right now, they have to go over here and they have to get to a computer and activate it to basically tr open up that bridge. Now, of course, the way the players are going to go about this is, is totally up to them. You know, uh, do you send one person off over to do or send half your team that way? The other half stays here to kind of do battle or whatever. You know, so obviously it's the strategy and the tactics of the situation will come into play. Uh, this, this card will also tell you how to set up your momentum, uh, uh, disc over here, which I will talk about here in just a little bit. Um, but it also just gives you the, the, the basic roots of, of what you're going to be doing. 
So uh, each person is going to be playing uh, one of the four settlers, as they're called. So because you are trying to find a different planet uh, to settle and and to um, you know propagate your species and what have you. And you know the miniatures. I mean, obviously, um, you know these are the ones that I was sent. Now um, these are a little more brittle. Uh, you know, I had to glue a couple of them back together, but they are you know fantastic uh, minis. And so obviously. Um, I am a big sucker for, I mean, this, this is awesome. Um, I'm, I'm a big sucker for, for miniatures that, uh, like, have, uh, like, all kinds of, like, cool, uh, you know, like, artistic value to them. I mean, the, the forearms for this character are pretty cool. Uh, this is, the, like, the psionics uh, master guy. He can, like, um, his name is Jaku, and, like, he can fly, obviously. And, and, you know, I always, like, miniatures that can fly, I always, I'm a little bit worried about them, you know, because they always have to have, the, like, make sure they have something, you know, underneath it so you can kind of see, you know, like, what it is or what have you. But, I, you know, I think this one works, you know, as far as, like, kind of a weird explosion underneath him or what have you. And, uh, and I'll show you the last guy here in just a second. And then, and, and trust me, like, all of these are really well made. And this is obviously like more of the brute. He's got that big giant sword. All got the heavy armor on, that sort of thing. But the the bad guys have have good stuff too. I mean, these are just the basic little spriggan guys that have you know their little machine guns that are lots of you know you can give you lots of trouble. You know if you let them if you, if you leave them alone too long, you know they will they will take you down. Let me just show you the big guy here. This is the bully, and obviously this one is really really cool big giant you know mechanical axe there getting ready to do some do some damage if you will but so from a sheer like like bling it up uh viewpoint obviously uh the game is really cool but regardless i just wanted to make sure i showed that so each person is going to get uh, uh, like, depending on which character you have, so, like, this is the psionic character, they're going to get a skill tree like this. So it's going to have all these different, like, little skill dots there, which ones lead to which ones, and then on the back, it's going to explain what each of those skills do. And so, and then it's, you know, going to explain to you, you know, how many action points it takes to use them. So, like, uh, this contagion takes five action points. Pyrokinesis takes one action point. So, all these different things that will, will cost uh, to, to activate those. Now, the way you, you pick these is that here, like, here's Alexandra, right? And so, and then you have all these little tokens to represent those skills. And so, when you choose a skill, like, you know, you just... You take it and you just slot it into your character sheet like so and then that is skill notice there's five spots for these and so each person gets to take five skills and they, they you know and they're gonna be have those available to them uh, on that mission and so um, and it, it's obviously one of the really cool parts of the game because of the fact that you're so such a customizable character um, yes you do fall into certain roles you know um, there's the medic obviously um, the, the, the security guy is kind of like the big tough guy, the big tank guy, uh, you know, the captain, you know, the leader, obviously, the medic, you know, going to be keeping everybody up and running, that sort of thing. But um, you can, you know, you can play with a little bit. And plus, the nice thing is a lot of these games that, like, have uh, your characters kind of leveling up, if you will, and having different powers and abilities and whatever... The, the, the weird thing about this one is that it's very malleable. So, like, you aren't kind of trapped into a skill tree. If you're, you do one mission, um, you know, having your medic being more combat-oriented for that mission maybe worked really well. But the next mission, okay, now you're going to be, like, really focused on healing because of whatever reason that mission calls for it. So I, I do like the fact that um, from mission to mission, uh, your role can change. All right, so um, after you've picked all that, you've done that, you're going to get some equipment. Um, you, you get this very large um, equipment deck, obviously. Like, there's the the different, uh, the, like, the name of the, whoever uses the stuff is down there. So, like, here you have, you know, the captain. And then, like, this is obviously just a big giant weapon. But that's going to tell you exactly what these things do. How many action points it takes if you're going to use that for combat. You know, range, you know, attack bonus, damage, that sort of thing. So, you know, and once again, I mean, if you've played games like this, this is going to be very familiar to you. I mean, um, a lot of these games are mostly stat-driven. Here, let me just actually point something out. So here is 
like the Santa character, you have the stats over here. And, you know, like these, this is like your action points here. Um, you know, depending on, it's called rapidity. And I should show you, actually, let me just grab like a, uh, a creature here as well. So here's that Spriggan that I was talking about earlier. Same exact thing, right down the list. They have the different things. Obviously, this guy is not as powerful as, as your, as your, as your hero, if you will. But, you know, they're going to have, they're going to run off of the same exact uh, stack block if you will. All right, so getting back to the stat block, uh, like I said, the first one is your rapidity, and that's like how many action points you have, and also um, it can determine if you go before somebody else, meaning like um, if you end up on the same uh, activation slot uh, on, on, on the dial over here, uh, but if you have a higher activation uh, number than the other person, uh, then you'd go before them, which can matter a great deal. Um, so moving on, we have uh, precision. Uh, that is this one where he has a two uh, precision. It's the ability uh, to like take aim and, and use your ranged uh, weapons. Uh, this is your physical tribute. Um, you're going to be using that not just for attacks, but also there are other actions that you can take that will require a physical uh, ability. Um, this is your mind characteristic. Um, it is used, to, you know, if there's any kind of mental acti action that you have to take, you know, like figure out a computer or something like that, um, you'll use your mind stat. Plus these are used for all the psychic ability of the hero. And finally the wounds. Now I'm going to talk about wounds really quick. So obviously that's how much damage you can take um, before uh, you are knocked out or you're incapacitated. Uh, when that happens, um, you just, you just like, like as in a lot of games, you just kind of, you know, tip your character over and then when you get to go again, you get to activate. And then you actually have these wound cards that you're going to draw one. And it's going to give you some, possibly give you something uh, debilitating. So here you'd have cracked ribs. Uh, the hero suffers uh, minus one wound stat. This card is active until they get cured in the colony. So you'd have like a permanent thing. Um, a fractured leg. Uh, if you want to move, it costs double the number of action points. Um, you can get lucky, actually, and if I can find one here. Um, that, uh, like, it's not so bad because all you get is this thing where it says unconscious. So you just kind of got the, the wind knocked out of you. You, 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 you got blacked out for a couple seconds, but there's no long-term effect. So you can get things, uh, that are good out of those. All right. So, uh, before, uh, the mission begins, um, you will draw an event. And the event will just have some sort of effect that's going to take over. So Heavy Rain, um, each hero has a penalty of one uh, action point uh, for the rest of the mission. So like something bad like that. Once again, though, you can get lucky and um, you have like an event card comes over and it's just a, a you know, dead calm, uh, you know, no effect. There's just nothing going on and you don't have to worry about any kind of uh, minus. Some of these will actually like increase the power of certain creatures that you fight. Oops, not that one. Here, like, uh, here, the power brood, Spriggan. So all the Spriggan, uh, the kids have uh, plus one wound. Um, so, like, you get a bonus there of, like, you know, the, the Spriggans are a little bit more power tough because normally one hit will take them out. And But if you got that, uh, that would make them, obviously, a little more difficult for them to take care of. All right, so how does the game play? Well, the, like I said, the biggest thing in this game is the 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 this action dial system here and i'm just going to kind of move it over there because i don't want to move any of those tokens i just kind of drop those on there um as the game progresses what's going to happen is um this dial is going to move all around like this and each and then there and if you notice there is a second dial right here and each complete turn of as it goes around will increase this dial by one. Just think of it as a clock, you know, an old analog clock, uh, just going, you know, through all, all the different steps, you know, and, and then moving ahead. Now, a lot of the missions that you're gonna have are gonna be timed. You're gonna have a certain number of, a certain amount of time to actually complete what you're trying to do. And, you know, you can lose if that's the case. Obviously, um, and that, that's your biggest, uh, like, enemy in the game, is, is running out of time. Uh, because the more, because you can't really get killed. You know, your, your, your players can't get killed. They can get knocked down, and they can become incapacitated, and they can get wounded, and they can make things difficult for you. But um, 
you you lose when you run out of time, and and the more beat down your characters get, uh, you know, obviously the the tougher it is going to be for you to complete your mission. So, uh, but the thing is, is that when this little dial points to the people that are activated, those people then can take actions. Now, there's two different things. You're either going to have the settlers, your heroes, your players, they get to activate, and then they get to use action points to, take, to move, to do attacks, to do skills, and they can use all of their action points if they want to, or they can use a portion of their action points if they want to. The difference is, if you activate one of the aliens, um, the artificial intelligence, the aliens, they always use up all of their action points. They never are crafty and think, oh, I'll only move one step here. No, they're going to use everything up, whether it's to pursue you and run you down, or if it's to use their best possible attack. And that is one thing about the game where the rules state, yes, because you know, a lot of games, okay, they'll like have very, very specific rules, you know, for what the aliens do or what the what the enemy AI does. It'll just go through this process. If if A is the case, do this. If B is the case, do this. If C is the case, do this. And and then they go through every possible you know, every possibility. This one it's a little more freeform. There still is like a, a situation where if the mission has an objective for, for, for the aliens to do, that's their first prerogative. If that isn't happening, then they're going to go ahead and they're going to see who's within range to make an attack to, and then they're going to attack that person, whoever's got the most threat. And I'll talk about threat here in just a second. And if that isn't the case, then they're going to move their furthest amount towards, like, the nearest possible uh, hero and attack them. So, they're, they're, you know, but it is a little more freeform, and the rules state, make sure you're as mean as you possibly can be with the aliens. Don't go easy on yourself. Earn that victory, and I fully agree with that. All right, so each person is going to get one of these dials. I'm going to talk about that. I talked about threat. I said I was going to say something about it. You notice there's a little one there, and it goes all the way up to 16. So every time your hero does something that would make the aliens mad, whether it's attacking them, whether it's wounding one, uh, you know, whether it's, you know, killing one, um, if it's like healing uh, uh, one of your, your fellows, you know, just something that makes them mad, you're going to increase this threat level. And the more, the higher you get, the more attention you're going to grab. Now, there are ways to reduce it, and one of the most easy ways to reduce it is to get knocked out. Uh, if you get knocked out uh, by an alien, you reduce it by two immediately. So, you and this is this is something that comes into the strategy a lot too. Obviously, if you have your big tank uh, settler that you know can take a da take some damage, take some bruising. Um, you know, they can get their threat level up high and they can kind of draw that attention towards them while the other players are doing something. And that's a completely viable and totally real uh, tactic that we've used while playing this game. So uh, that's how that works. So basically what happens is, is that when you, when you take an action, you, the person will go... And what they'll do is they'll say, okay, I'm going to take, I'm going to move three, and I'm going to do an attack that takes two action points. So if they did that, they go one, two, three, four, five. And they put their action, uh, like, you know, their, their pawn there. And the next time they get to go is when this eventually would turn to them over there. Now, this obviously has one of those things where it, it has a fantastic element of, like, do I really go all out and do something big and huge that takes up all my action points? Or do I kind of play it safe... And you know, and you know, just do something minor, and then like go again in a couple of turns. Now, there's a couple of caveats to this, and I'm gonna kind of set this up to make it look like this. So, if you have, let me just put like, let's say you have a situation like this where you have a hero that goes here, there's nobody here and here, and then there's an enemy that goes right there. If you actually just like took a small little action like this. And then, you know, and, and you, you have to actually, like, go, you know, move your, your token um, at least until the next time when an enemy, at, like, you know, is a, able to do something. Now, you can definitely go ahead of it, right, and, and choose something that goes beyond it, but you can't do something weak or small before. You have to, and, and if you can still do something that like, would take two action points, but you have to then push your, your your token all the way to meeting up with the enemy. And that's just so you don't kind of game the game a little bit, if you will. All right, so all that being said, how does this all work when it comes down to rolling some dice and seeing what happens? Well, 
dice rolling obviously is a big part of this game. You're going to get a lot of these uh, special dice. There's all these different symbols on there. Now, you're going to see these, and you're going to be like, oh, geez, what do all these mean? Now, you're going to be using these dice for skill checks. You're going to be using them for attacks. And all these dice have these different um, things on there. And any skill you have, any attack you have, it's going to have... Uh, like a, a, a symbol on there to represent what it is. So remember this uh, gun blade uh, that I showed up. So this is the blade shot, which has a range, and this is the blade slash, which has like which is hand to hand. Now this is, I, I wanted to use this one just because it has this. You notice that it has this little damage that shows this little gun there. This one has a damage that shows this little fist. So. Here's the deal. Um, and I, I should mention this too. Like, so it says three action points to do this. But if you're going to go ahead and do a chain attack, which will end up doing more damage theoretically, you're going to use four action points for that. So I kind of like this weapon because it kind of shows off a lot of different things. But so you have this like little thing. And so depending upon which type of attack you're going to make, you're going to use the stat. Like, so precision. You use precision. Your precision stat for... Um, uh, this, the, the, if you're going to be shooting, and you're going to use your physical stat if you're going to be using this weapon. And then you get to add the attack bonus of two. So, like, if you had a physical stat of two, and you're using this, you get rolled four dice. If you had a precision of four, and you shot with this, you get five dice. So then when you roll the dice, so let's say we're shooting with it, we're getting five dice, we're going to roll... You're going to look and see how I did. I got one. That was horrible. So you're going to look and see how many gun results you get. And then you match them up. And that's easy. I mean, it's just like you're looking for the same symbol and you and, and you succeed. Now, if I, I rolled four dice, let me see if I roll better. Remember, I said I had four dice with a physical attack. If I'm punching. All right, I actually did much better there. I got all four having a success. And so in these case, you add all those up and that's the number of wounds that you're going to do. So... You know, and that will allow you to, you know, obviously, possibly uh, hurt, um, you know, the, the player. Now, you do have armor. There are, you know, and, and the enemies have armor as well, which will be listed on the different creature cards as well. Um, armor uh, allows you, like, uh, to roll uh, and, and, you know, gives you a bonus to your roll. So, uh, Titan Play provides plus one physical uh, when a driver rolls to parry attacks. And so... The same thing happens. Um, you're going to be rolling these dice. Depending upon the type of damage, you roll the dice. How many successes you get minuses the those wounds from the damage that was done. So, you know, if you in, so you just roll it again, and then you try to you know defend yourself against those things. Um, I wanted to show you one other thing here. I want to show you one other item that kind of shows like uh, something that like depending upon the results you get, uh, what can possibly happen. All right, so here is our psionic Jukas that he has he has this uh, energy scourge, right? So it's a slash weapon. So it, 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 you know, he's be attacking. It takes three action points. It is a hand to hand attack bonus of two, and a damage is that. And it has a long reach, actually. So you reach. But look at this. So a Jukas attacks this weapon and rolls two brains. The attack changes from physical to mental, and that's important because a lot of the creatures you're going to be fighting will have really good physical protection, but they won't have as good mental protection, and so you'll be able to do that. So if you roll, let's just roll five dice and see what happens here. So if I rolled those five dice, I'm looking for two brains. I got one brain. Of course, I didn't get it. So I'm going to cheat and say, you know, so I got a brain like this. And so then, if I, you know, as long as I got a couple of hits, let me like actually fake and cheat here and give myself a couple of successes like that. So now I got two fists, but I also got two brains. Now the two brains don't add any hits to the damage, but these two hits that that I got would then be considered mental, uh, like psychic or mental damage, which, you know, it's just, it's just cool stuff like that that kind of makes the game kind of come alive, and, and it, it gives it kind of a... I, I, the verisimilitude, if you will, because it just makes sense, right? You have this psionic, uh, you know, warrior, if you will. He's got this big giant, you know, stick that, that that he powers with his brain, and so if he can, you know, infuse it with enough power uh, of his sense of will, you know, he's able to just do more damage, and so that once again adds to the immersion, adds to the story, adds to the fun of the game, if you will. So, uh, I mean, that and that's you know, a fairly 
so much. In a nutshell, pretty much the game. Um, you're you're going to be going on these different missions. You're going to be trying to uh, succeed at them and like building off um, like this this fantastic campaign story uh, that they have built up. That like is all about um, the, the this you know, these settlers, you know, trying to save their race and actually carve out uh, a portion of the universe uh, for themselves. So, uh, you know, I, I've played lots of games like this, right? And I played um, lots of games with really cool minis and, and, and cool little missions and, and cooperative experiences that you and the other players are able to sit down and enjoy and play together. And, and this is a fantastic one. But for a lot of reasons, and I'll talk about all of those uh, in my final thoughts. All right, thank you uh, very much for uh, taking a look at that overview that I was giving you. Now, I didn't like go into each and every little rule. I mean, there's like, um, you might have noticed that on the, the that, that disc, there were those different symbols in the different locations uh, of the, for, for the different phases. Um, depending upon what, those were there could be like different uh action th things as far as the mission is concerned that will activate um some of the monsters if their their monster token is on that particular spot when they activate they can do an extra special power same thing with the players so i mean there's there's different things that go on and so that kind of adds a lot to the activation as well like trying to make sure that if you are yeah, as the settler you're trying to make sure that you you get to one of those spots so you can do that extra special power on your turn sort of thing and and it kind of adds a lot to that whole timing that activation uh, uh you know, module that you have and i'm going to talk about that in just a couple seconds here but i want to talk about the theme really quick so um i you know obviously this is a prototype that i was sent it isn't the full game i don't have the full campaign yet uh but I, I just in the back of my head i just have this kind of gnawing question right so i've always thought like you know okay i i role-playing games, Dungeons and Dragons, you go into a dungeon, right? There's monsters living in there. They're minding their own business, but for whatever reason, it seems like just completely normal that you would, you know, kick the door down, walk down the steps and, and, and kill that creature and take its treasure and leave, right? So, which seems kind of like, uh, you know, maybe not the most brave or, 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 you know, heroic thing in the world to do. Um, but, uh, the thing that like makes me think is like, okay, so here you have, the humans and they're escaping right and they come across this this alien planet and they they try to you know colonize it and but it isn't theirs to colonize right yeah so part of me is wondering if like the campaign storyline actually like kind of deals with that a little bit and i'm curious once the game comes out you know whether or not it's going to touch on that but anyway regardless so you know, as I said, I've played lots of these types of games. I've played games with really, really cool miniatures. I've played games with, like, a co-op situation. Um, and and I, I enjoy these. I mean, I just, I kind of, I, I, I enjoy the immersion into it. I enjoy the movie aspect of it. I mean, this this feels like a movie, right? You know, charging into a battlefield. You know, need to get that alien artifact. Quick, get that computer. Get it to run so we can get across that bridge. And, you know, we can claim that. We're, time's running out. That whole aspect, it, it's it's a, you know, it, it, it kind of drives the game, right? And it, and it drives that story. And, you know, it, it I, I've never been one to just sit down and play a game. Okay, I'm going to set up my five guys. You, just set, you set up your five guys and let's fight. You know, I, I need to have that story. I need to have some sort of background. I need to have some purpose as to why I'm fighting. And, and so when you have a campaign, when you have a story, when you have this, 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 this plot... It, it adds so much to the game. Now, obviously, the coolest part of this game for me is the the action timing, right? You know, just like and and lots of games use time tracking, and it is one of my my favorite mechanisms. I've always really liked the whole aspect of like, man, you know, I I, I really want to do this big long action, but you know, I, maybe it isn't the best choice for me right now. Or do I gamble and say, well, taking a big long action is good, but man, there's like, you know, two or three, you know, aliens that are going to activate in between then and then. You know, will I be able to survive until I get to take another action? You know, and so, and that's because of those decisions, because of like, you know, the gambling and pushing your luck and, and, and trying to work out, you know, it's like, well, will the other character be able to run over in time and take care of that, that, that alien and, and, and kill it before it gets to me, that sort of thing. It adds, once again, as I said, to the four people sitting at the table or, you know, three or two or whatever, um, 
sitting at the table and having that discussion, having that interaction, working together to, to figure out what's going to give you the best possible chance. Now, I don't like a deterministic cooperative experience either. I don't want us to say, well, if I go here, here, and here, that's going to do that, and I'll be able to do that damage to that person, and we'll win. No, that's why the dice are good. You know, it's like the best laid plans, right? But if you roll, if you, if you have a bad roll, you know, then you know, you you have to deal with it, and you have to figure out a way to get past it. And I think the game, you know, and some people are going to say, well, geez, if you just, if you roll bad, then the game's over. It's like, well, no, I kind of like, it's one of those things where the problem creates an opportunity to be even more masterful, to have an even better story, to have an even better immersion, uh, to like, you know, pulling out that victory at the last possible second as time is ticking away, um, and, and, and to challenge you. Now, as a cooperative experience, it does match the qualities that I want. I want it to kick my butt. Um, I want it to, like, you know, I want all the players to feel like they're contributing. I, I want them all to feel like they have a part, and I don't want one person to feel like they're the one telling everybody else what to do. I mean, with all the different options you have as far as the different skills you're going to take for that particular mission, the different equipment you're going to take, um, you know, all the different options you have as far as how you're going to solve the problem of that particular mission, it just it just feels like everybody really is on a team and, and, and you're working together. And so when you do pull out that victory at the last second, um, everybody feels like they really, really did their part and it really is a, a shared uh, victory, right? So, I mean, for all those reasons, and plus the game just looks amazing, uh, if, if this is the type of game you like, uh, I think this is definitely a, a, a must-back, must-pledge, must-pick-up type of game for you. So that is uh, Sin of Tempora. If you have any questions about it, go ahead and ask. I'll be happy to answer those as best as I can. Um, as always, thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video. And until next time on the Undead Viking, telling you to have yourself one heck of an awesome day. All right, bye-bye.